What's going on guys, it's Bromley at Empire Barbell and today we're going to cover three things that you're doing wrong with your deadlift. Now all of these things are going to have to do with posture, so we're going to be looking a lot at what happens from the hip all the way up to the shoulder. Keeping good posture is not just important for efficiency, but it's really important for keeping yourself safe. And the quicker you get a handle on these things early on, the more likely you are to be skilled at these cues down the road and also to keep yourself in one piece so you can actually train consistently enough to get strong in the first place. So the first thing we're gonna go over, thing number one that many of you are doing incorrectly is you are not maintaining a neutral spine. Your posture sucks at the start of your deadlift. There's two ways that people screw their posture up. One is by rounding. Now this is the most common, okay? When you see people bend over at the bar and their back is in a round and as they pull, their hips come up and they, they slide further into a round. Now this is the most common one. And it's common for a couple of reasons. One is if your shoulder and your hip are closer to each other as your back rounds, that gives a kind of quick and dirty leverage advantage. So many of you that are underdeveloped, your body will, will naturally slide into that position because you'll find it's the only way you can move the barbell. And that's a really bad habit to get into, okay? We don't want quick and dirty fixes. We want good solutions that we can practice over time and get really good at to make ourselves really solid technical lifters. That's what we want to strive for. The other reason is because, well, it takes work to maintain a, a neutral spine, to keep good posture. So if, if I'm bent over under a load, this takes a lot more work to maintain than this does. So again, as the weight gets too heavier, as fatigue sets in, your body will automatically kind of default to the path of least resistance. So the second way that people screw up their postures, it's a little less common, but that's by doing the opposite. That's by overarching. But you'll see a lot with female lifters who hyperextend their lower back. And you'll see it sometimes with, with smaller guys. As guys tend to add more muscle and get bigger over time, they get a little more bound. They lose a lot of the mobility through their spine. But smaller guys and, and women specifically, especially in the lighter weight classes, will tend to overarch their lower back at the, at the start. And what that does, when you extremely overarch, you lengthen your hamstring and your glutes, you open up your abdominals, you're putting basically all of the responsibility of keeping that position on your erectors, a very weak position. It's weak as far as your spine goes, but it's also weak as far as your main movers go. So you're, you're opening yourself up for failure. And then what you also tend to see in those same lifters is when fatigue sets in or when the weight gets really heavy, you see this goes to this and it gets uglier the more the weight goes up. So. What we wanna strive for is neutral, that's ideal. Now, not everybody's gonna to get to neutral, but you wanna try and get as close to neutral as possible. When we're looking at a neutral position, we're looking at the hips tucked, so the glutes are tight, and we're looking at the ribs down, okay? This is neutral. This is the position with which we brace all of the other muscles around for our starting position. So as you're neutral, you'll feel your glutes tight, your ribs down, now your abs are tight, and then this is where we can cue things like your lats or your obliques to kind of lock your ribs down into your hips. So now we have a much more stable torso. So all those little muscles that are stacked on top of each other, they're more rigid, okay? They're going to be aligned a lot better so that they can take a bigger beating and you're gonna be a lot more efficient off the floor. Now a big problem that a lot of you have that engage in the rounded start position, and many of you do it because you're unaware of it, many of you do it because as the weight gets heavier, that's what happens and you don't care enough to fix it. But what happens as you play into that dysfunction is you're setting yourself up for a really crappy lockout. So for all of you that have ever focused on fixing individual weaknesses in a bid to try and get your deadlift up or any other lift for that matter, a lot of times you ignore the starting position, which might be the main reason that you're suffering at a certain position of the lift to begin with. So let's look at lockout strength. When it takes to getting the bar to lock out from above the knee, we're looking at a mechanically very strong position. Your leverages are so good. You know, best advice I ever got was from an older powerlifter who just told me flat out, above the knee, the lift should be over. If it's not over, it's because you're doing something wrong. So many of you are inclined to look at somebody who struggles, you know, blows the weight up from the ground and struggles to get that lockout as someone who, let's say, has weak glutes or a weak upper back or whatever you want to associate that with. Oftentimes, it really is that they're just putting themselves in such a bad position at the start that they get into a worse position at their knee. And on a heavy lift, at that point, you're fatigued and your leverages are worse, which leads to a missed lockout. 
Instead, we should be looking at what is the strongest possible position at the knee if we were to set up the pins right at the knee. How are we braced? How is our spine aligned to where we can ramp up a really strong lockout with weight that is close to, if not above, our one rep max? That's the position you wanna to strive to get in from the floor. We're setting up at the floor, so we're at that position by the time we get to the knee. That's gonna look a lot like this, where I'm braced, Okay, my spine is neutral, I'm in my strongest possible position. My goal is to make sure I maintain the same back angle at my knee so that I can ramp through a quick lockout. If I do the opposite, if I round and I let myself get into a crappy position where that back angle changes and I give it my posture, now I'm putting myself in a horrible position. This is what you see a lot of guys do. They'll start low and they'll get in this position. And then you'll see that shaky crap to get the bar to lock out. Again, from this side, jerking into the bar, hips are coming up, back is rounded, I've lost posture. That's essentially all hamstrings. Hamstrings, and then you just turned your back into like a spongy fishing pole. So force transfer just gets worse. So all of the attention you put into your deadlift technique, none of it's gonna mean dick if you are not maintaining good posture. And if you're not fighting to keep that posture and those positioning cues throughout the entire lift. The next one we're going to get into is a little counterintuitive. This has to do with what your shoulders are doing while you're holding onto the bar. So there's a school of thought that as you learn to deadlift, you should try, and it's kind of in the same vein of what we were talking about, that to have good posture and to set yourself up for the strongest possible start, that you should actually have your shoulders back, that posture should be completed you know, from your waist all the way up to your ears. Now, I get the rationale behind that. And if you do that, you will definitely develop a very strong upper back. The problem is that some of you may get a very big leverage disadvantage by doing that. What you might notice with some better pullers is that they actually don't keep their shoulders back at all. They actually let them hang. Now I'm gonna illustrate that because I'm probably the best example of a lifter that will suffer from that cue. I have very short arms, right? Got these little T-Rex arms. Made me a very good presser very early on, made deadlifts horrendous for me. The reason it made deadlifts bad for me is because to keep good posture, but to also keep my shoulders back, I have to bend way over to be able to keep my shoulders back. This feels like a deficit deadlift. It's very uncomfortable. But when I lock out, notice that the bar is right around my waist. The bar's above my junk right now. The longer pull I experience when I do that, along with the awkward setup, really kills my deadlift. Instead, I got comfortable letting my shoulders hang a little bit. I'm still maintaining posture through my midsection and my upper back. I'm braced. The big point is that that posture doesn't change, okay? You don't give as time goes on. You set up the way you're gonna finish. So instead, what I do is I actually allow for some give in my shoulders. Now, when I do that, I'm gonna repeat what I just did, set up in my tightest possible position. I'm gonna pull and I'm gonna scoop my hips through, okay? So right now my hips are through, I'm fully locked out, but my shoulders are down. The bar finishes about three inches lower. Take inventory, look at what some of the best deadlifters in the world do, despite how they're built. Long arm, short arm, long leg, short leg, however their, their build, their stance, whatever technique they use, you will be hard pressed to find an elite deadlifter who does not allow that hang, okay? It's something that will give you an immediate leverage advantage. It will make it so the act of deadlifting does not beat you up as much, okay? We're shortening the range just a little bit. We're giving you a little bit of a leverage advantage. That's gonna take a lot of strain off your back. That's gonna take a lot of strain away from your recovery capabilities. Now, the third mistake I see a lot that has to do with your setup ultimately it has to do with where your hips are relative to the bar. Now this is gonna be a lot more important for some of you longer torso guys like myself. Guys with shorter, more compact torsos tend to have a much bigger margin of error. So if somebody's bent over the bar all the way and they have a short torso, they're not gonna have as devastating as a, as a difference in their setup depending on where their hips are. Now if you have a long torso, that effect gets exaggerated and that's where guys tend to have bigger problems, finding out where to sit, how to brace. So this has to do with where your hips are. If you do have a longer torso, and if you are experiencing problems, either let's say your lower back aches, let's say you have trouble keeping posture, okay? You feel like you break a lot easier. Let's say you have a problem with starting off the floor. If your hips are too far back, if your butt is way away from the barbell, 
So if I'm gonna set up right here, that means my shins are vertical, but my butt's also very high in the air. And I'm way back, almost like a stiff-legged deadlift. That is a very weak pulling position. Now, like with all accessory movements, we tend to look for weak positions to try and build us up. So as an accessory variation, that's not necessarily a bad thing because it's going to disadvantage us and it's going to strengthen that area that is in a poor position. But as a means of moving maximal weight for your competition setup, hips need to be into the bar. This is the reason that sumo deadlifters get a very big advantage because when you have a wide stance, your hips stay very close to the bar. So that moment arm is shortened, your leverage is immediately increased. It's a much stronger position specifically for guys that are, that are built for it or that are technically very good at it. But in very broad terms, hips being closer to the bar is always going to be a much stronger position. So what does that mean for a conventional puller? That means you need to find the sweet spot where as you bend over, your hips don't end up way far away from the bar, but they actually end up down and in. Now, every time you do that, that's gonna cause some other thing that might be problematic. So if you notice, as I get my hips closer to the bar as I come in, as my hips come down and in, my knees actually come forward. Now that's not necessarily ideal. So then you might think of, okay, maybe I need to push my knees back. Maybe I need to rock my way back to uh, mitigate that. So when I set up to get around that, because I like to pull with my shins very vertical, as I set up, okay, posture's good. Shins are vertical. Right now my butt's a little too far away. So I'm going to shift my weight back and down. So right here, this action, I'm acting like a counterbalance with my hips. As they come back and down, I feel upward momentum on the barbell. That small act of getting my butt down and into the bar causes me to immediately put upward pressure on the bar. So it gives me a better sense of where the handle is on the deadlift. It gives me a better sense of exactly how to push right at the start, but it's also getting my hips into a stronger position because it may only look like a few inches, but when it comes to leverage and lifting, a few inches is a mile. So remember, the farther away your hips are from the barbell, the more your midsection is going to have to work, the more your upper back is going to have to work, the more the main movers are going to have to work. So do yourself a favor, find a position that lets your hips come down and forward into the bar. You're going to find you get a much better start. You're going to find you have a much better time recovering from your deadlifts. That's it for today, guys. I got a lot more of these things that are coming down the pike. But for now, these are the big three I want you to focus on. If any of you have had uh, run-ins with these types of issues, go ahead and leave it in the comment box. And if you've had any success applying cues like this, go ahead and let me know. Better yet, go ahead and sign up for our forum. It is absolutely free. Go ahead and start a thread start a training log, leave a comment, get a discussion going. We got about 500 members. It's growing every day. I want to have a good, strong, vibrant community there where people can use it as a resource to get their questions answered without having to pay a premium for coaching. So leave your comments in the comment box. Until next time, this is Bromley. I'll see you.